In the late 1980s, manga creator Hirohiko Araki would create his magnum opus, or his most successful series, which was named Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. This series was fiercely popular all around the globe and was one of the most recognizable shonen manga series of that time. Araki himself believed that the manga was far too complex to create an animated series that would make any sense. Although, because of the series' massive success, it was decided in the 1990s that there would be an animation created that would cover the manga's third and most famous part, the Stardust Crusaders. They decided only to animate the latter half of the series, which mostly took place in the deserts of Egypt. For those who don't know, each part of the JoJo series follows one of the descendants of the Joestars. It begins with Jonathan Joestar in the 1800s, then his grandson in the 1940s, then his great-great-grandson in the 1980s, and so on. The show revolves around a mysterious stone mask that possesses secret powers, and how the descendants of the Joestars seem to have to keep dealing with these evil entities. Like the manga, the show's 13-episode OVA, or original video animation, was met with considerable success. Some would even argue that the old animation is better than the newer one we have today. Although, most JoJo fans would prefer the modern adaptation, as it more effectively captures the unique personalities of the different characters. A3P, which was the same studio that created the OVA, decided it was time to release some of the earlier parts of JoJo, since again, the OVA only encompassed the latter half of the third part. In 2007, the studio released a 91-minute film called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood, which captured the first part of the JoJo series. The film was in celebration of both Araki's 25th anniversary as a manga artist and the 20th anniversary of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, so it was a big deal. The plans for the film were massive, they hired Tom Myers of Skywalker Sound, the same company that did George Lucas's Star Wars films. They even hired Sold Out, a Japanese hip-hop group that created and performed a custom-ending promotional song called Voodoo Kingdom. Although, the most valuable component of the film was the director that they selected. They decided that the animation was to be directed by Junichi Hayama, the same individual who directed the OVA. Because of Hayama's success with the OVA, it was pretty much fully guaranteed that the Phantom Blood movie would do amazingly well. Along with this, Hayama is a highly decorated director and is well respected in Japan's animation industry. He has had a big role in other high profile animated shows and films, such as the Sailor Moon movie, Yu Gi Oh!, and after Phantom Blood, he would later direct Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Golden Kamoi. The combination of Araki's anniversary, Skywalker Sound, the music group sold out, and the director Hayama meant that the Phantom Blood movie was no joke. It was serious business. Marketing for the Phantom Blood film was in full effect years before it actually came out. It was first teased at the 2004 Tokyo International Anime Fair. One of the booths had this unique animation clip that played on a loop to get people hyped about what was to come.
At this time, the Phantom Blood film was in its early stages of pre-production. The short clip at the event wasn't even confirmed to be a movie quite yet. Ultimately, the animation was just a pilot so the studios could see what people thought of another animated JoJo piece of media. Although some inconsistencies were shown in this trailer, they didn't quite line up with the final product. For example, some of the scenes and characters depicted, such as the infamously removed Robert Speedwagon, who plays a crucial role in the series, did not make it to the final movie. Along with this, the animation quality and character designs were changed as well. Many of these adjustments are thought to be because of budget restrictions, but it seems that time constraints most likely played a bigger role in the removal of some of these aspects of the film. The removal of Speedwagon could be a large piece of the puzzle to finding this lost anime. Speedwagon and the Speedwagon Foundation play a massive role in the story, making him a huge piece that is fragmented from the Phantom Blood movie. It simply doesn't reflect Araki's work to its fullest, leaving much of the story incomplete, with many inconsistencies and holes. Because of this, some people believe that Araki simply didn't like the final version of the movie, and maybe the production team tried to make Araki look bad by leaving out some important aspects of the film, such as again, Speedwagon. There could have been some type of grudge between Araki and some of the production team, in turn leading them to sabotage the film. Then maybe, after that, Araki made sure to keep this media from being available after theaters. Although, it's unfair to say that the film was meant to be a rip on Araki because of the plethora of resources and amount of marketing put into the hype for this movie. On top of that, the movie was being created in celebration of Araki's work, and it really doesn't make sense to intentionally screw up the film that they've been working on for so long. It would be embarrassing to both Araki and the film crew to screw something up so bad that was so easily set up for success. So there's a good chance that theory is wrong. After the Tokyo Anime Fair, the teaser was supposedly lost and thought to never be seen again. For years, it remained dormant, but in 2019, it was miraculously recovered and restored by the user Mangomation, who was actually one of the main administrators on the Phantom Blood Discord server. He found the trailer on an old DVD RW, which was listed on eBay. Apparently, the pilot trailer got copied by an employee when they used to work at the dubbing company. The trailer is freely available to view on YouTube and is even fully restored from the original as well. The gaming company Bandai, who co-produced the film, would also decide to make a Phantom Blood PlayStation 2 game to generate even more hype for the movie. When the game was announced, JoJo's creator, Araki, showed up to the event, as well as some of the voice actors and staff. While at the event, viewers got to see a special 46 second sneak peek at the movie that was set to release in the next few months. On top of this, the people who pre-ordered the PS2 game would get a copy of this exclusive content on DVD. There was also this Super Jojo S commercial that was released to promote the game. The Phantom Blood Archives is the main Discord server fully dedicated to finding this lost Jojo film. The members do a fantastic job at collecting any and every bit of information on this lost media. There are even channels in the Discord that are fully committed to each character and the art that was found that is associated with them. This Discord server really does go all out and has the information laid out in an organized way that is easy to get caught up to speed with everything that has been found. 
They also listed some common misconceptions that go along with the film. A few of these points are pretty noteworthy. One, being how the film's release was not pulled abruptly or necessarily limited. It played for three months, opening in various theaters, so it was similar to how other anime movies were run. At that time, nothing would seem out of the ordinary. Another interesting misconception is the idea that Araki hated the film, or wanted it pulled. At the end of the day, there is no evidence supporting this theory, and Araki has even expressed his appreciation for the OVAs that were done by the same studio. Although, we can't necessarily throw it out of the realm of possibility that Araki did in fact not like the films. There just hasn't been any concrete evidence that have been found just yet. The Discord even found the Phantom Blood's original, official movie website, which can only be accessed on the Wayback Machine. If you go on the website, you'll be greeted by the stone mask spinning in a circle. According to some researchers on Discord, the Hirohiko tab contains a 3 minute long interview with Araki. Along with this, there was more video content under the comment tab. Unfortunately, it's currently unknown whether these videos still exist or not. On the Wayback Machine, they seem to be completely inaccessible due to the website's broken state. Again, the Phantom Blood Archive Discord went above and beyond. In this case, they compiled various blog posts from 2006 and 2007, all of which have commentary and reviews from the movie. Arguably, even more interesting, some of these blogs have pictures from some of the various theaters from the showings. The Toshi Menon screening on February 17, 2007 apparently had a whole showcase dedicated to the Phantom Blood movie. Another blog poster showed off their ticket stub and even showed off their movie packet which they got for attending the event. They even showed off their stone mask strap which came with the purchase of advanced tickets. There was actually so much merchandise and art that was at the different theaters, but the most exclusive of all of them was this limited edition bronze statue of Jonathan Joestar. There were only 100 total statues available at the first theater that premiered the show. So needless to say, this is a highly sought after collector's item that would be a centerpiece addition to any JoJo collection. The Discord is an amazing tool and an important archive for everything Phantom Blood, although most of their attempts to find the film would fall short. One of their most interesting and recent attempts was the hiring of a multilingual company called 7C Lingo. They specialize in international calls and said they would be willing to help one of the moderators reach out to all the companies that were involved in the making of the film to get some answers. Unfortunately, there was no update on the post, and when I got to speak with Mango Mation, the moderator of the Discord, said so the project got delayed. While Discord messaging Mango Mation, he had an interesting perspective on how he believes the film will be found in the future if it does end up being found. He believes it will most likely happen in three scenarios. 1. A camera leaks, which is essentially someone from the audience recording footage in the movie theater from a third party device. 2. Someone finds a 35mm screening copy of the film that isn't destroyed or cleared, which is ultimately what the theaters use in the projector to play the movie. 3. There is a burned DVD copy found that is meant for employees to use while working on edits for the film. Any of these scenarios happening is highly unlikely, but not as impossible as you might think. One of the big reasons why the Phantom Blood movie is so difficult to find is that it was only ever publicly shown in Japanese cinemas to a limited audience, and it did not have a home video release. Since it only released in Japanese theaters, it makes it that much more difficult to find information, especially if you don't speak Japanese. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure was a big deal, especially in Japan, which made it even more strange that this film would be lost. It seems like so much effort and money was put into this movie, it makes absolutely no sense why this film wouldn't have at least some type of home DVD release. It literally even had a PlayStation game made, so it would bring out more hype for the movie release. There had to be a good reason why this film is both difficult to find and was never released on DVD. When that reason is known, then maybe searching for the film would be much easier. Throughout the years of searching, people have adopted different theories on why it is gone. One of the main rumors is it had to be the creator Araki, or maybe the director Hayama, attempting to hide the film from viewers because supposedly one of them hated the final product. Another theory is that the producer of the film died during the run, resulting in theaters pulling it early. 
There's no concrete proof that any of these rumors are actually true, but there is evidence of controversy with another piece of JoJo media around that time. This could have been the main reason why Phantom Blood was never released for home media. A3P, again, the studio that created both Phantom Blood and the OVA, was experiencing some controversy with a scene from the OVA. At one point, the show depicts the main villain, Dio, holding the Quran while vowing to kill the main hero, Jotaro. Even though there was no mention of the Quran in the manga, and the addition of it was just an accident, it still sparked heavy controversy and anger among Islamic fundamentalists. Jojo's parent company, Shuisha, was concerned about the incident and decided to recall all of the OVA DVDs. Shortly after, they revoked the rights of the entire Jojo series from A3P. What this means is that A3P couldn't legally distribute Phantom Blood on home media after they lost the license. There's a good chance that they weren't able to get all of this done before the controversy happened. Because of the controversy, the rights to the series were handed over to David Productions for future JoJo adaptations. David Productions did their best to hide all of the earlier JoJo content to be able to have a fresh start. Because the OVA released on DVD at one point, this series is available online. Currently, the main theory is that A3P couldn't legally distribute the movie in time before they got their rights revoked. The Phantom Blood movie would be in a weird place, and even though they wanted to distribute the movie on home media, it just wasn't feasible at the time. If this is the case, then there's a good chance that somewhere, a copy of the film exists, as chances are, some of the production team would want to keep a copy for their personal collection. It's so strange that even though we have all of this extra content from the film, but the film itself is still completely lost. But that raises the question, was any portion of the Phantom Blood movie ever actually found? The search would change in 2012 when a student working at the Academy of Arts University in San Francisco uploaded a YouTube video. In one of his classes, Eric Zamora was tasked with adding his own sound effects to some footage. The film he got assigned to work with was actually the production work print of the Phantom Blood movie. For those who don't know, production work prints are rough versions of a motion picture used by a film editor during the editing process. In this case, it's the first 16 minutes of the actual film. Strangely enough, this content from Phantom Blood was provided by the film composer for the university to use as course material. This footage is actually the only known raw content from the actual Phantom Blood film, and to make it even better, it's 16 minutes long. The remainder of the film, which is about 70 minutes, is still completely lost. It is important to note that since this is a production work print, there are some unfinished drawings, and the video has no audio associated with it. This footage has been the most important find to date in the search for the movie. Although interesting, no matter how much art, memorabilia, flyers, or character stubs we find, it still isn't nearly as cool as real footage from the lost movie. An interesting approach to finding the film would be to ask the theaters themselves if the theaters that showed the film had some type of archive or library of all of the previously played films, it might be able to be found. Although, many of the films that are shown in theaters are actually rented, so when the film is done showing, the video file is deleted or the tape is sent back to the studio for reuse. The Library of Congress in the United States predicts that 75% of silent films that were made are completely lost forever. A lot of this actually has to do with the scarcity of prints, because a lot of older films only had copies that were used on projectors, which doesn't make sense to distribute to the public. For Phantom Blood, there is no mass production of the film on DVD, so if the video exists, there are probably only a few copies out there, much like how the old silent films were made. Because of this, I decided to reach out to various companies that might have it as a burned DVD. It seems like this would be the best chance of finding this lost film. I reached out to the Film Archive of Japan, A3P Studios, and even Bandai, or if there was any information that would usher me in the right direction to find it. After sending out these emails, I was unfortunately met with no responses at all. It also seems like the A3P Studios email is out of order right now. To be totally fair though, I don't know how to speak Japanese, so my messages were literally put through Google Translate, which sometimes doesn't really convey the message appropriately. 
Iraqi seemed difficult to reach. The only way I found to contact him is to send him fan mail in hopes he writes back. I believe you might be able to reach out to his publicist, but I doubt you'd be able to get any more information on the anime from him. Hayama, on the other hand, may be a good person to reach out to. He has a Twitter account and he's relatively active on it. Although again, there's a big language barrier that could be difficult to deal with. If there's a chance that there was a DVD that has the movie burned on it, the best way to find it would probably be to reach out to both A3P and all of the individual production members that worked on the film. More specifically, the editors probably have a higher chance of having a copy laying around. If a fluent Japanese speaker, respectfully, reached out to all of these avenues and we got responses back, then we would have a better idea of what exactly happened and if it's possible that there may be a copy or two floating out around there somewhere. The Phantom Blood Discord community is the beating heart of the search for this lost animated film. Their various finds and expert organization of the archives are absolutely astounding. The Phantom Blood media that they found is super interesting. From the 2004 trailer to the different memorabilia at the premieres, they really did an outstanding job. We may be far off from finding this Phantom Blood movie, but I believe that over time, the community will pull through and eventually get their hands in a copy. It's possible we'll keep finding bits and pieces of the film, but there's a higher possibility that the whole film is all found at once. Somewhere, there has to be a copy out there that will be found one day. Maybe it's in the A3P archives, maybe some of the old theaters have it, or maybe even Araki himself has a copy. One thing is for certain though, the Phantom Blood movie does exist, and it's highly likely that it's out there somewhere just waiting to be found. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thanks, and until the next one.